you want to know what? Um, you know about these sunglasses? Yeah. I was like, man, I'm gonna buy these sunglasses. Where'd they you looked buy those at? online, and I was like, man, I got these. They were gonna be cool. So I wore them to church, and uh, I saw you sitting down below. And I was like, man, you know, I want to be still relevant and hip. Because, like, that's my soul. It's like, I'm like, so yeah. after the sermon. What did Rick say about you You don't grow up until you're 80? Yeah, I get that. So I'm still growing up, so I wanted to be relevant. You're like, hey, what's up? And you had your girlfriend here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you sit down there in the congregation because, you know, Security. You're like, yeah, security. Yeah. And uh, so I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to come down the stairs with my glasses on. And I came down, and I'm like, hey, what's up? And you just, you laughed. <laughs> I laughed? <laughs> yeah, so then I, I made a pass, you know, talked to some people. <laughs> and then I came back around. And, and and your girlfriend and you were talking to some people. So I was like, hey, what's up? And I put my sunglasses back on. And you laughed again. <laughs> and so I was like. <laughs> you were laughing too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what, you, well, that's what you do <laughs> when, you know, you, you don't want people to know that. You hurt. obviously realize that your feelings have just been crushed. <laughs> so you laugh it off with the people who crushed <laughs> your feelings. And I was like, nah, okay. So number three, I walked down that way and I tried to like, hey, what's up? I never met your girlfriend before. Oh, this is the first time I brought her? Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, <laughs> everybody thinks I'm... I'm dumb now. No, we went to we went to brunch after. That. Yeah, we went to breakfast because she probably felt that you had a special needs friend. Yeah, no, she, I didn't even ask her. I said after I invited you, I was like, "Oh, I should have asked you. Do you want to do that?" She's like, "Oh yeah, I don't mind." I'm like, <laughs> "Either way, all I'm saying is she's like, I'd love to help the needy." Hey, Pit Viper, <laughs> I wore your sunglasses. Mm. Your your your. Your disclaimer on the email after I paid for them said that everybody, oh. see, look at that. See, immediately, see, that's what's up right there is because you look like a wrestler <laughs> that's about to go in the ring. I look like I found him off the side of the road. <laughs> I look like my grandpa when he had like, <laughs> cataract surgery or whatever but <laughs> they didn't have iPad. those they didn't have those black ones they were just like hey, uh here you go no, we, bought, they, we got these those in look a, good they look like you're about to wrestle some steers or something when you wear them see no like you're, you're you you to, say that now and now all i can think of is there's bigger guys that wrestle steers are there yeah barry wrestles steer do Barry. He's not that big. He's kind of, he's, uh, he's, he's you know, we're going to beat around the bush around this whole thing. You know, <laughs> Barry's not a big guy, but he's, he's bigger than I am. Is he? No. I mean, I don't know. You got Barry, wider shoulders in him. He's my neighbor, so I feel like you're setting me up to my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man, Barry is a cool dude. I don't know. I don't know. You want to know another thing? Um, this week, we we shared a few things like um, got these bracelets. Yeah. Um, street smart Christian and uh, Romans one sixteen. You know it feel yeah Romans one sixteen for I'm not ashamed of the gospel is the inherent word of God first comes to the Jew then to the Greek. Um, the the reason I chose. Romans one sixteen was for the right off, right out the gate. It says, "For I'm not ashamed of the gospel." Yeah. And and I've held on to that for a couple of years, and and you know you get you get, you know you tell your pastor, 
I'm not sharing the gospel. Romans one sixteen. What's the rest of it? <sighs> I didn't prepare a follow up. Yeah, so you don't. So uh, I encourage everybody to follow up. You know, I think it's it's huge because a lot of people like. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, and then they go try to slam dunk, and they're just that short. Yeah, just a head short. What do you mean I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength? <laughs> hey, here's a disclaimer. Christ didn't say he was going to let you slam dunk. Yeah, he was going to make you a superhero. He said he, w- he was going to build you up with the confidence to do anything he wanted to do, and you could try to do that, but he did not guarantee that what you try to do is going to, you know, I, I'm probably going to get attacked for this, but if Christ guaranteed that everybody could do anything through him, boy, would we have a lot of uh, Elon Musk's out there. Yeah. No, no. He said he'll give you strength in everything that is your spiritual gift, I believe. Whatever he calls you to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He won't, you won't fail when he calls you to do something. You'll fail, but. How many times have you, you said, though, like, oh, my spiritual gift has to be <clears throat> X, Y, Z. Like, you make up your own spiritual gift. Yeah. And then you don't achieve that, so then you're discouraged. Right, because it turns out you're yeah. wrong, maybe. Um, yeah, are you wrong? Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I honestly, I don't know my spiritual gift. And I have tried to find it a few times in the past, but. Well, I think that it's easy to try to justify what is your spiritual gift by getting that boost of adrenaline or confidence in you that's like, oh man, I went to church two Sundays. In a row. The preacher was talking to me and uh, I believe I'm supposed to be a preacher too. Yeah. Do you know how much baggage comes with that? Like, you do that and then you're like... No, I wouldn't wouldn't say baggage, more responsibility. Well, responsibility, but with responsibility comes a ton of luggage. I mean, it's like... It's not not like an easy... Immediately, I'm just going to confess, like, I, when I first started coming to church, I wanted to have the biggest church be the the loudest voice. Yeah. Because I saw on YouTube all these cool preachers that are like, oh, that's all you got to do. Yeah. Now I've learned that that's not cool because of all the stuff. Like, I was just listening to... I don't know if anybody has ever heard of Reformed Wiki on YouTube. Oh, the one that has Bodie on there all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it's a it's a guy that did, and and it's, he sounds like Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah. I think some, it's just a I think it's just a young dude some putting dude, some robot like, voice on his this thing. This is really me. Yeah. Do you like this? Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. I am really Michael. This oh. is Mike. And I'm like, it's okay, like, this but is then Freeman? he has. This isn't he, what I listen to. He has all the, like. He's got really good stuff. Yeah, and it's like, well, this guy fell to this, and this guy fell to that, and this guy, and I'm like, oh, so I'm like really scared. But with that being said, welcome. Welcome to Street Smart Christian. Street Squad. You Street Squad. And what's up? I put a trailer on the other, last night, and I put it on there, and, and, and one of the posts on there or one of the video, whatever it is, is called. Um, had these boxers, and it said, "Let me hear you, Street Squad." Guess what I heard? Crickets. Yeah, <laughs> crickets. Hey guys, um, the only way this gets shared is if you'd like and share this. I'm not telling you to do that. Like I appreciate, like I see all the views, and I see I love it, love yeah, it, love it, love it. Views, a lot of views, guys. Like and share it. Like and share it, though. Let's get this out there. The only way we can get this out there is if we put it out to you guys, and then Street Squad just take it out there. Um, Street Squad is not something that you have to come and sign up for. You are a part of Street Squad if you're a part of this. If you support us, then you're a part of the Street Squad. Yeah. Um, that's plain and simple. Uh, we're going to be over at the El Paso 
whoa, I almost said the El Paso County Fair. We're going to be here Friday before the El Paso County Fair at the Calhan Summer Fest. Summer this Fest. is the first time that Street Smart Christian is going to have anything anywhere. That we're just going to go out there. We're not selling anything. We're not doing anything. We're just going to go out there, have a good time. You might have some things that you, to give away. Bang! Maybe some of these bracelets. They say Street Smart Christian Romans 116. You can wear those anywhere you want. Show it off. Show off our ministry. We got a banners. Friends. We got. We're also supporting our local church here, the church that me and Kevin attend every Sunday. Living Word Community Church. We're currently we're, in it right now. Yeah, and we're trying to not a closet. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna support that church. We're always gonna support that church. It's what got us into the faith. No, never mind. Church doesn't get you into faith. Jesus Christ gets you into the faith. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit gets you into the faith. But this is a place we like to come to get fed with the truth. Brothers they they got the meat here, and we just have to take from that. Um, there's no preacher. There's no pastor. I, I read another. I listened to another thing. Read. I don't read that good. Um, <laughs> I listened to another thing that was like, um, I listened to Todd Friel and it's on, um, a podcast and a, a thing that he does, which is called wretched radio. Um, wretched radio is a, a program that I subscribe to and I like to listen to. And it's, it's a really sound radio, but he had a thing like somebody submitted him a question. Who is your favorite pastor? And I immediately clicked on it because he had a picture like, this is not my favorite pastor, John MacArthur, Vody Bauckham, all these guys. And I'm like, oh, no, have we been listening? And once you clicked on it and realized that he's like, my favorite pastor is the pastor at my church. Yeah. Obviously, that has to be your favorite pastor because that's where you go to church. So you can't just go to a church and be like, well, that guy's kind of good. No, you better be plugged into a church with a Bible-believing, truth-telling, no-nonsense biblical pastor. Yeah. you got to get into it. Um, when I first got into the faith, I got sucked into the, um, the, uh, the churches. You know, I always strayed away from the ones that were obvious. Holstein. <laughs> yeah, Joel Holstein. Oh, wait, like I'm gonna say his name. Say like, oh, you know, I'm probably gonna get canceled yeah. for that. Yeah. Edit that out. Edit timestamp. Yeah. Timestamp. Uh, but there was. No, we need to do a shout out to Rick Gopher. Yes. That man. He does it. He does is it. Unapologetic. And you know what? He he doesn't say he's unafraid of the. He's truth. perfect because he's not perfect. He's not afraid of. the truth but he preaches the truth but you know what he's a sinner just like we all are and that's the biggest thing that i want to get through to street smart christian people the street squad we are all sinners nobody's better than anybody else no we're all we're all sinners equally wretched and, and sinful so when we talk about things and you guys are like well they're not sensitive just know that we're we're hitting topics that we we visually see that's a problem, but just know that we know that we're not perfect either, and we're sinners just yeah. the same. There's no bigger sin than another. There's, you know, you can lie, and that's a sin, and you can murder. That's the same sin. You got to see them the same. There's no, there's no sin greater than the other. So we're not perfect, and we're not saying that we are perfect, but... With that being said, welcome to Street Smart Christian and like and subscribe us on all the social medias, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah, I also yeah, yeah. Fil found this filter and we're going to try this out. Have you ever seen the movie Jeremiah Johnson? Yeah, the old one where he's out in the wilderness. Yeah, and they do with the beard. Yeah. And they got that meme that's like, yeah. So like Jeremiah so Johnson... Do you think everybody should subscribe to this channel? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he will show up on the screen oh, because I figured it out that every time we get to do something right, Jeremiah Johnson's going to be like, Amen. Yes. Yes. So, as promised, we're going to dive into Bible study. That's what I think our focus needs to be on. We just don't want to be over here talking a bunch of trash. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Uh, if you've been following Street Smart Christian, you've seen me do a crazy video inside my greenhouse, inside my car, inside everything where I was going through First Timothy. And the reason I was going through Timothy is because months ago, I got attacked on social media for saying that, hey, that might have been true through those times, but we are in 2022 and things have changed. Well, you know, I prayed on it, I thought about it, and guess what? The times might have changed, but the Bible never did. Because it's a living word. If that it's was alive. true, if that was true, then God would have sent somebody here to rewrite the Bible, and that to my knowledge has never happened. No. Um we have a lot of false prophets, false yeah. things like that that are, you have all these crazy things but not to the key points that I'm getting at. Um, I'm not going to get in too much what I was attacked by. If you follow me on social media, if you follow Street Smart Christian, you might already know what I'm talking about. So I took it upon myself for a while to study 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. The reason I'm doing that is because of the people that were following me. When I got attacked, they drilled it in and it was Timothy. And I'm like, well, okay, I've never read Timothy. I've never done anything like that. I read Titus, um, and it was Paul telling Titus, you know, how a Christian should live, how the church should work. And so I read that, but then I'm like, let me get into Timothy. And this is very much of Paul telling Timothy in 1 Timothy, okay, here's how you set it up. Stay in Ephesus. I want you to stay here. I want you to preach here. I want you to do this. These people are crazy, but I want you to keep true to the word of God. And I want you to preach this. And Timothy is fired up in the beginning. He's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. That to me was encouraging and awesome because Timothy's like, okay, here's the blueprint. Then blank, blank, blank. Well, now we have a second Timothy because, and I'm glad there's a second Timothy because then Timothy is like, whoa. You didn't say this was going to be that hard. Mm -hmm. And I thought that if I followed all these things, then the world was not going to come against me. The world was not going to attack me. We were going to be good. Well, Paul's writing to him again the second time saying, Ah, yikes. I, I understand that this is all happening so fast. And you're going to get discouraged. And you're gonna want to follow the ways of the world. Let's, I mean, let's be honest. Timothy was in his in his thirties on the time that he we did First Timothy, and he's a man, and he's feeling the same things that we do, even though it was that many years ago. Yeah. Um, I don't think it ever goes away. Uh, I I didn't do the math. I didn't. I didn't go into theology or anything like that of when Timothy was written, but it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, and those guys were still going through what we go today, what we go through today. Yeah. And so... Chapter uh, 3, outlines that? Yeah, and so I thought we'd go through... The first chapter in Second Timothy really talks about, hey, I'm writing to you, and, and I just want to let you know that I'm here for you. Stick true to the gospel. Yada, yada, yada. Open your Bibles. Don't, don't take my word for it. Open your Bibles and read Timothy chapter 1. And, and you get really what he's trying to say. But I don't think that's enough for me to talk to today. Just open your Bibles. Get to 1 Timothy. Read the first chapter. And then go into the sec I wanna, second. I want to make one key point here. Yeah, you said about Timothy being discouraged by not by being attacked and and thinking, oh, this was wasn't supposed to be this hard. But if you're not getting pressured and you're not being attacked, 
then you're not doing something. You're right. not doing right. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad right. this the is devil. The devil will leave you alone if you're not doing anything for Christ. And this is absolutely let why you I brought sit there. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm not worried about him. He's not doing nothing. And but as soon as you start doing things for Christ and expanding his. Kingdom, and now that you said that the devil's going to jump on your back. So now that to. you said that we're going to have what I call a confession breakdown. Confession breakdown. At your screen, you're going to see a bam, 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 confession breakdown. The confession breakdown for me is what Kevin just touched on is absolutely true. The devil's going to attack you every time he can. We sat up here last Tuesday, and I wasn't in it. My brain was not in it. I was depressed. I hated everything. I didn't even want to be here. Yeah. I didn't want to be here. I just... I was so beat down by life, by the world, by everything. I wasn't praying. I didn't care. I just hated everything. And if you guys noticed last week, I did not put on our podcast last week. I didn't put it on Street Smart Christian because I listened to it a couple times and it sounded good, but I knew in my heart that I wasn't 100% into it. I was just listening to what you said. Which is good. I'm not saying that I just listened to what you had to say and then threw it out. But if I'm not 100% into something, I'm not going to give you guys that junk. Well, you're not going to post it? I might post it later yeah. for people to, to judge it on their own. But when I got home, I was just so depressed. I feel like you let the devil win if you don't he post He did. It. Absolutely. Um, and he's yeah, not going to yeah. win at the end, but he won at the time because right. he told me I wasn't good enough. Whatever we did was trash. No, because this, it was this stupid. Is God breathe, man. This God's here for this. Yeah. And, and so that's my confession right now. And, and just know this, that just because I said this is a confession part, this is a confession for me and Kevin. This is not a confession. You don't have to confess to people out loud. To be saved by Christ. I don't want this to be confused yeah. with any other doctrine that you have to confess to somebody. This is not it. This is just me getting off my chest because I love you guys. And I'm always going to be 100% honest with you guys. Now, being honest with you guys, I know that by being honest with you guys doesn't get me closer to heaven doesn't get me closer to jesus that's my own works on me accepting christ as my savior and trying to walk like him more every day yeah. and that's what we're here for this is not to lead you or persuade you into any kind of crazy stuff we want you to walk more like jesus every day that's what we're trying to do we're trying to give you the truth the meat stuff like that take it but do not think that we are your perfect teachers you have to listen to us you have to follow us you have to do this and that no walk more like jesus talk to god every day talk to jesus every day and the holy spirit will come into you and lead you in the ways that you're supposed to be so with that being said let me get into this second timothy chapter two this is where i started taking notes at work today instead of getting work done i hope my boss is not listening you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is that is in Jesus, Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So what basically what we're going into right now is Paul faces death. He encourages Timothy to pass the gospel on to faithful men who will turn in turn, teach others so that the gospel is preserved for coming generations. So right now, Paul is in prison. He's been sentenced to death. He already knows that. But he entrusts one guy to keep it going. Now we can get into that all day long is Paul's about to die. So he's trying last ditch effort, give it to somebody else and do this and that. But we're in 2022. That has been going on for generation after generation after generation. Been twisted, been spun out. How, okay, you being a father of a son, 
what do you do in a last ditch effort to teach your son to push what you've pushed? Yeah. It's hard. It's very hard. Now imagine that Jax is 30 some years old. And you got to push all this on him right now. Yeah. Would it be easier to do it younger? Yeah, you definitely want to start him younger. And you got you got to you got to you know, you want to be the fun dad, you want to be the cool dad. Well, I haven't been that. No. I don't have that luxury. <laughs> I'm but the only, I'm the only parent, so there's no. There's, yeah, there's, it's hard because there's no room for. You know, I tried it with my daughters. My daughters. Um, I shouldn't even say daughters because the one is three months old. <laughs> but my 19 year old, like we we got into the faith together, and it's. What age did you bring her? Or did you guys get it? 17. Really. She knows it, but. We deal with what we call the world right now, and it's and it's hard. And I'm not making excuses for her, um, but it, it's difficult. So I can sympathize with Timothy going, guys. He was going through the same stuff we were going through, but we, we, we are, are going through now. We are going through. He was a man. He's 30 years old. Do you think he didn't see some girl walking by? With her, whatever they were wearing in the Middle East. Like, I'm not even trying to be a historian right now. Or even make jokes about what they were wearing right then. But he was like, I am the preacher here in Ephesus. I am the pre- Oh, my goodness. I am the preacher. <laughs> and then Paul knew about that in prison going. <laughs> I got to write this dude another letter. I told him to stay there because stuff was going crazy. And I got to write him another letter because I, ooh, I forgot to tell him that, by the way, it's going to go crazy. It's only going to get worse. Oh. Timothy's the only dude in Ephesus, as far as I know, trying to spread the gospel. Yeah. Saying all this good stuff about Jesus. All these people, I like this feel good stuff about Jesus. And now they're like, hey, Timothy, what's going on with you? Yeah. You're not giving them the whole message. I like being with you, Timothy. And now he's like, I, I don't know if I can do this, Paul. And Paul's sitting here in Second Timothy saying, you have to. Yeah. This is not a, a matter of, well, if you can't, maybe you should take a break. No, Paul's like, there's no breaks in yeah. this. You have to do this. And he's taking on the task. He, I mean, he's taking on the task. He is really... He's really doing this. So then we go into... Um, chapter 3. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please who enlisted him. Uh, okay, so when you all get a job out there and your boss says this is what you got to do, what do 99.9% of you do right away? You do everything you can to please the boss and then go above and beyond. Most now, right. two months later, you're like, whatever the boss is. But let, let me tell you what, Jesus Christ is our boss. Mm-hmm. And so many of us give, we're like, yeah. And then two months later, we're like, nah, you know what? Let's hide this from the boss and hide that from the boss. Well, guess what? This is a boss that you cannot hide it from. An athlete is not crowned unless he completes according to the rules. It is a hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding and everything. So, basically, I said, you can do all this work that you want to do. That was chapter 2, wasn't it? Hmm? Was that chapter 2? No, that was, we're already in 8. I mean, that's oh. fine. <laughs> that's all right. You the verses, man. All right, I'll, I'll start. Okay. 
timestamp that. Yeah, we gotta cut that. We'll timestamp that and then um, get into the verses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically so what I got from there is you got you want to please your boss. You got to keep keep pleasing your boss. And if you're an athlete and you're doing something that you're so passionate about doing, you're gonna do everything in your absolute power to make sure that that dream comes true. So why can't we manifest that? Why can't we harness that into following Jesus? Because it's not cool. Because it's stupid. Because everybody thinks you're weak and everybody thinks you're a follower and everybody thinks you're this. You know what? I'm sick and tired of hearing all of that. I see so many of these youth and people out there in professional sports, this and that. And I'm not into any of that. But when I see it, they put absolutely 110% into whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. That is their God. And what does one of the commandments say? Put no other gods before me. That's exactly what you're doing. Idols. That becomes your idol. So stop. I'm not saying stop following your dreams and stop trying to put 110% into something you want to do. But make God first yeah, and God will help you get there. I'm not saying God's going to get you a Super Bowl ring, get you into the NFL, the MLB, the NBA, whatever it is. He might not do that because he might have other plans for you. But put 110% into what he wants you to do. And let me tell you, he will put it on your heart of what you're supposed to do. And get out there be. and do it. But we don't. We put it into stupid stuff and then we get disappointed. We get disappointed. No, you, we Why? Put it, we put it into things that we want. Exactly. And then you're disappointed. Why? Because it's not what you really want. It's, no. It doesn't satisfy. You're looking at this. It doesn't satisfy you. You're looking the at all that, that money. You're looking at all that money. And I, I, I Paul exhort, exhorts to Timothy to make an effort to think and mediate on what Paul has written. He's saying, okay, I gave you all this stuff in 1 Timothy. I gave you all this stuff, but I want you to think and meditate, not mediate. Sorry. I didn't even read right. Can you read my writing? Words are hard. I mean, words. Words are hard. Meditate on what Paul has written. So, Paul wrote this stuff. He wrote these letters to Timothy, and, and Timothy's getting discouraged, and Timothy's ready to give up, and he just wants to just give in. But he's saying meditate. Um, that meditate, man, that's a hard thing to do, because when I think of meditate, I think of these bald headed dudes like myself or whatever like, uh, <laughs> uh, really what meditate is is read this and think on it and study it how many times do we meditate on anything well, we meditate do, do on yoga. on social media every day how many likes how many subscribes how many of this and that how many people looked at this? And we look constantly, constantly, constantly. If we looked at scripture as much as we looked on Facebook, we would have so much memorized. Yeah. If you just took Timothy, whatever we're reading right now, 2 Timothy chapter 6, and you looked at it as much as you looked on Facebook, you should have 2 Timothy memorized by the end of the month. If you erased Facebook and you just had, if there was the ever, you, well, the it doesn't matter. I have the Bible app. Yeah. Guess how many times I look at the Bible app versus Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, social, or Snapchat, well, all that crap. What this is, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this is what it is because we're trying to get you into it. But all that yeah. junk. Yeah. You spend all your time on that. And Even it's, if it's we spent the time not broadcasting this to everybody else because we have a heart and want to spread the gospel to all the people. The only reason we're doing this is because we know everybody has the addiction that we do. And that's social media, Snapchat, all this junk. So the only reason we're on this platforms is because we know that there's people worse than us that might not skip it and listen for an hour. I listen to so many junk. We're just as bad as the worst. <laughs> yes. I am the worst of the worst. I was listening yeah. to this podcast, and I won't name the name of the name of the podcast, 
but it's one of my favorites, and I look forward to it every week. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's funny. Yes, they use four-letter words. They do all the stupid stuff that I should not be listening to, but I think it's funny. (laughs) And halfway through it, they started knocking Jesus. Oh, no. And immediately my gut turned. Because I want to love these guys so much. But then they start knocking what I believe in. They start knocking Jesus, saying things about him that I know are not true. I had to turn it off. And even though that segment was probably only 45 seconds long, I can't bring myself to listen to the rest of the podcast. And now next week when it comes on, will I subscribe? Will I probably listen? Yeah, because I'm hoping that they don't bring it up. Yeah. But for the last couple of months, there's been little teeny tiny things that one of the people in that podcast are not believers. But I didn't think that was enough. Oh, I don't believe. I don't believe. That wasn't enough for me to stop listening. And then... He had a bit in his stand-up that they say, and I've never watched his stand-up, but a part of it, and I'm like, because I used to always listen or think like in church and stuff, and they're like, you got to watch what you listen to, the music you listen to, and the things that you do, because there's little tiny snidbits in the music and everything that might pull you away from the gospel and this and that. And I'm like, nah, you know, I listen to Slipknot, Lamb of God, Mudvayne, all these metal bands, rap groups. I love music. I love every genre types, of music. Yeah. Country music, redneck music, everything. I love it all. If you got a good message to sing about, I'm going to listen to it. Or even if you can't understand the message. But now I'm like, <laughs> when it's so blatantly shoved in my face that this, I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I listen. The fact that you see young kids. Yeah. Now we got this Roe v. Wade thing, the pro-life, the pro, you know, this and that, pro-life versus pro-choice. I wanted to love the people that might think that it's pro-choice, but now it's getting thrown in my face so bad. It's worse than homosexuality to me at this point. You know, homosexuality, it is what it is. And I'm not a supporter of it. And that's going to get me canceled right now. And if, you know, I'm not asking anybody to voice their opinion on it, but they're sinners just like I am. And I pray for them. Do I love people that may be in the homosexual culture? Absolutely. Do I agree with their lifestyle? No. And I'm not asking them to agree with my lifestyle. It's like agreeing with a a heroin addict. Yeah, exactly. You know, putting that needle in your arm. It's, it sucks. But this Roe v. Wade has got me in a tizzy because it's in the state of Colorado governor polis. And yes, I'll put his name out here and I hope people tag me in his stuff made it to where you can abort a baby at nine months right before you have that baby. And I'm not going to go into detail how they do that, Yeah, it's not. but pretty that's murder. Mm. That's murder. And I'm not trying to bring this podcast down, but that's really how I feel. I'm pro-life. I know Kevin's pro-life. We're pro-Christian. We're pro-Jesus. We're pro-truth in this Bible. And if we stray away from the truth in this Bible, we might not get 100,000 likes. We might not get 50,000 subscribers, but that's not what we're in this for. It's just like what you were saying before. Small churches. It's we just. You had the dream that you wanted the biggest church, and then that's not really the dream. That's not what God no. will provide that for you. No. But let's get back into it. Timothy 2.8. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel. Paul doesn't think that Timothy will forget Jesus. That's what we need to think. We don't think that anybody's ever going to forget Jesus. Everybody knows Jesus. We're not going to forget Jesus. This is a call to remain mindful of the truth of the gospel. We all know Jesus. We all know what he did. Even my atheist friends can tell me that Jesus was a good dude that probably lived. Mm -hmm. 
and did great things while he was here. But we need to remain mindful of the gospel that Jesus told Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I was talking to my mom on the phone earlier, and she she uh, purchased some things from the guy that does my pillow. Yeah, who's been canceled? He's a Christian guy. Went through some hard stuff, and every time, rate. yeah, every time that they send her something, there's a Bible verse, and she told me a verse in Luke. She's like, "Do you know?" And and I said, "Yeah, that was something that Jesus said," and I told her that you know the only. R- you know, as far as I know, and please don't butcher me over this, the red letters come in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These guys were eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ. They walked right with him. They wrote down things. And so when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, a lot of stuff sounds the same. It might be repetitive. But that was what Jesus was saying. And so Paul considering himself a prisoner of Christ, a prisoner of God, knows that the only thing to do is to pass all of this knowledge from those Gospels on to Timothy, Titus, whoever it may be, me, Adam, Kevin, everybody. We have to spread the Gospel. to share the good news. In 2.10... Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. While there is disagreement among Christians on the doctrine of election, a biblical understanding of doctrine does not undercut mission work but enables it. Paul endures precisely because of a certainty that through his ministry, God will save some. You know, I I didn't dig in too much of the theology and stuff like this on this scripture, but it says that that some are going to argue the doctrine, and that is exactly why I'm in Timothy. I know that the people who are the person that attacked me on Facebook... I love them so much. I grew up with them. We're going to disagree on the doctrine of of the Bible. That's just what we're going to do. I still love them as a Christian brother and sister, but they said something that made me get into Timothy that I'm just like, yeah, I disagree with you because I'm reading the truth of the Bible, but I'm trying to understand where you're coming from, and I can't do it. And... I just, this is why I'm studying so much in Timothy. Yeah. Because I think that you and I are about, we're, we're like Titus and Timothy, where we're just servants and disciples of Christ that we need to be reminded of all this. So it's so important to read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then get into Timothy and Titus in, in Acts and Romans and all this of what Paul was out there. Paul was super strict. Yes, he needed Barnabas out there to level it out and to say, okay, you're being really strict. Here's some, you know, let's fluff it up. And and that's really a bad word, fluff it up. (laughs) But Barnabas was there to say, hey, okay, settle down, Paul. You're getting really worked up. And Paul was doing it because he knew he messed up. He knew he messed up. If Jesus drop kicked me off a horse and said, hey, why do you do this? And you better get your stuff together. Then, yeah, I'm going to be really strict about it, too. And you know what? Jesus Christ is doing this to us every day. But we are so blind and so numb to this world yeah. that when Jesus drop kicks us in the face, we go, oh, it's OK to fail. Because the world tells us it's okay to fail. That's Jesus saying, wake up. Wake up. He's trying to teach us something. That's You are more than what the world is telling yeah. you. But the world is telling us that it's okay to fail. It's okay to do this. And so just here's the easy way out. And Satan comes in and says, hey, let me tell you. Tip that bottle up. Smoke that jaunt. Do all this. 
look at that pornography, do whatever it is, in which we are all sinners of all of it. We are all nasty, filthy sinners, but Jesus Christ is telling us that there is a way out. And Paul is trying to tell Timothy that you have to uphold this to make sure people know that there is a way out. If it wasn't for that, we would have no structure in our church today. And people have taken the structure and authority of church away and they blew it up and they say, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it for fame and fortune. For the monies. Yep. For what I think will make me happy. I bought these new sunglasses and guess what? It got me nowhere. <laughs> They're all right. But... <laughs> <laughs> But we're going through Timothy, guys, because I want our viewers to know that we are not going to skate around the truth. We are going to say things that are going to offend people. We are going to say things that are not going to make us rich. We are going to say things that aren't going to make us popular. But we want you to be a part of this street squad and we will not let you down. Join us. Join Christ. Don't join us. Do not join us. Join Christ. Join the family of God. Be adopted into, into his family. But if you're lost your child and God. you don't know where to go, reach out to us. You guys, you know what? Christ has moved. The Holy Spirit has moved so big. Because before last week, we had a podcast and we reached out and we wanted people. We said, we want some editors. We, we, we just, you know, if you would be so humbled to do that. And guess what? In two weeks, I had somebody say they would manage our website, get on our social media, help us with that. And your brother showed up on Sunday and was like, hey, man, let me look into some stuff. Let me see if I can help you out. Um we got these bracelets. We passed them out to get our message across that we are not ashamed of the gospel. And and then your dad, the shout out to the, what is your dad's business call? Mestis Automotive and Mestis Autos, what? Automotive and Cycle. Mestis Automotive and Cycle <laughs> reached out and, and, and the look in their faces that, that knew we were being serious about this were, were so incredible. They were like, I'm going to donate this. Yeah. That was our first donation to Street Smart Christian. was from Mestis Automotive and Cycle. I mean, we haven't got it yet, but... I mean, he's probably holding on to it uh, until <laughs> we pay him up on our automotive bills. <laughs> on all our but it's moving, guys, and it doesn't move without you guys. We just want to spit out truth, biblical knowledge, all this. And we're not scholars. We're not theologians. We are just trying to walk more like Jesus Christ every day because that's the only way that I know how to function. I can function like a regular dopey and go out there and do what I want to do, which I will be next door, cracking cold ones, having a good time playing pool. But that's not my inter... I want to store up treasures in heaven. Yeah. The only way I know how to do that is through this, getting out there, Getting the message to our guys. I, you know, Street Smart Christian is working on a youth program here. I'm working on the days, the hours, stuff like that. But we really want to reach out to the youth because that's who really needs us right now in this twisted, sickened world. I want to reach out to the youth. I don't know how to act, but we're going to learn how to act together. Yeah. I think that's what's important about this is that we are real we're not trying to put on a facade or pretend anything and that's why i think it's important that even on those days that we don't feel like being here and doing this or yeah we don't feel like we've had the best week or things yeah. like that we still that that's human we're human and if you if you if you don't if you you put that away and you act like oh no i'm not i'm not having a hard time i'm, I'm doing all right like you hide that, yeah, and that's when it when it comes up and gets you. And yeah. that's the whole point is like we we have to be open through all the struggle. You know what's open is I'm gonna go to the bathroom and let Kevin continue talking to you guys. 
Because I thought I could make it to the prayer, but I can't make it to the prayer. <laughs> How much time so we this got? This is real. <laughs> so just do it, and then when I get back, we'll close in prayer. Okay. Gang, baby. Yeah. Um, talking points. Talk to yourself. My name's Kim. And yeah, talking on the note of being real and being honest. You know, I haven't had the best week. I don't feel the best. I feel a little sick. I didn't want to be here today. But I came today because I know that what Christ did for me deserves every ounce of what I can offer. And that is my undoubted full dedication to Him. And I slip, I fall, and I go through the trials. And I like to say I'm in training. You know, I feel like I've been in training my whole life. But God has a way of helping you through everything, every step of the way, if you give it to Him. And Adam didn't trip up the stairs because he's trusting in God right now. So I'm going to just say straight up how real and unscripted this podcast is. I almost peed my pants. Did you wash your hands, bro? Yeah, I washed my hands. <laughs> you know why I washed my hands? Because I heard you wash your hands earlier and I'm like, how many times have I washed my hands? <laughs> Come on, dude. COVID. <laughs> COVID. I picked up a prescription for my cousin, and she said she was in quarantine. I didn't even ask. She was COVID. I was just like. Yeah, that's pretty probably that. Does that mean we had to put a COVID disclaimer up on this podcast? <laughs> Do you? Could have said the word. Dear YouTube. We were just kidding. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. No COVID. Yeah. I said COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, guys. Sorry. I seriously <laughs> edit that out a time stamp <laughs> time stamp you probably can edit out the whole part you know we're never going to time stamp anything or edit anything like what you guys are getting from us is 100 hey, percent solid that's why you got to put up that last video dude i'm going to i'm going to but i just want everybody to know that i am human too we all are i'm human too and uh I fight depression. I fight. I anxiety. fight anxiety. I fight things that, you know, I don't know how to control. Uh, I used to control it through alcohol. Yeah. I used to drink a lot, and um, here we go. Now we're getting into it. I used to drink a lot, and Me and now too. I don't. So when I get this depression and anxiety, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to act, and I don't know where to go. I know where to go, yeah, but I don't because Satan doesn't want me to go there. He pushes harder. On so things. when we recorded the last podcast, I was in it, but I wasn't in it because all that I could go through in my head was, why am I doing this? I don't have the proper equipment. I don't have the everything because I want to be like Joe Rogan. Well, obviously I'm not Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan has multi-million dollar contract with Spotify. Hashtag Spotify if you want, you know, you know, uh, hook it up. Just kidding. It's not about the money, guys. It's really not about the money, but your mind goes there because That's it's in the world. Yeah, I, yeah. In in my head, do I want a hundred thousand likes? Absolutely. But then I gotta go back and I prayed this morning, and I prayed when I got here, and I prayed when Kevin said he was on his way. I prayed and I said, God, use me as a tool in your toolbox. Use me only in the ways that you can use me and you know, help me fight the devil. And so he did. At least I think he is. Oh yeah. And I know he is. When you knock, he shows up. Because I've been more vocal now, today, than I have been in in the rest of our podcast. But guys, I love you. I really do. And we will dedicate one one or two podcasts where we're gonna give our testimonies. Um, and I'm serious when I say, Hey, look us up on our website, 
www.streetsmartchristian the number one number don't one. type in o n e put the number one dot com it's kind of a shanky but we're we're oh, managing it hey. we're getting there we're gonna get it we're gonna get it's it there's there's progress, but you can still general. go on there and subscribe to it go to youtube share it to youtube people Facebook, it's important that after you listen to the podcast, you give it a thumbs up. Or, if you don't want don't to, that's fine. Just give listen it an to angry it. Angry face. Do and they then, have and that? Then make a comment and say. They got the angry face. Yeah. Oh my god. Hey, y'all, y'all don't know what you're talking about. Stop! Please stop doing that, and um, please um, just let me go to church. Get plugged into a church, people. Don't listen to me and Kevin. This is not church. This is just us trying to spread the gospel the best way that we can. We are open to suggestions. If you want us to get out of Timothy and go into John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can do that. If there's something on your brain that's like, you know, Adam, you know, Kevin, I was reading in this chapter of this, and I really don't understand or how to approach it. If you give me a few days notice, I will study as much as I can into it and give you what I get interpreted out of it. But I encourage everybody listening to this, get into a Bible believing, truth telling, scripture, verse by verse church. Don't get into the church that for 30 minutes, it's just like, our God is an awesome God. That's a great song, but the fireworks and everything, the smoke, and you're just like, oh, and your hands are in the air, and you feel great. Well, you're feeling great because that's what a concert does. Get into that pastor that when you walk out of that church, you're going, I don't really feel good about anything I heard just now because you're being convicted, and that's what this is about. There's going to be times where I'm going to say some silly stuff that's going to get you convicted about something. I'm going to say stuff that's probably going to get us canceled. Kevin's going to be like, yeah. Uh, Why did you say that? (laughs) The truth. That's all it's about. Get into the truth. I come to a church where a pastor tells his sermon. Sometimes I walk out feeling good. Sometimes I walk out questioning everything I did for that whole week. And that's real. That's what's real. And that's what keeps me coming back. Get plugged into a church. I'm not saying come to Living Word. I'm not saying come to anything that I'm suggesting you, but use discernment. Get into a church. Get plugged into a church. All y'all kids that are listening to this, get into a youth group. Youth groups are becoming zero. Community and church is becoming something that doesn't exist anymore. The church happens on Sunday, and for the rest of the week, people just go on doing whatever they're doing. If the church says they're doing something, nobody shows up. But Sunday, now we feel a little guilty. By Saturday night, we're feeling guilty. we got to show up to church, and I'm going to be real. That's how I feel, and that's how I feel people use it. You're feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. So let's show up on Sunday for an hour. Me and Kevin don't get the luxury of one hour because we started to do a podcast and we started asking Jesus for guidance. So guess what? Seven days a week, we doing something silly. Oh, oh, best believe for 45 minutes we're going, oh, or for whatever time the Holy Spirit's going, you're an idiot because we're both idiots. We're both idiots and we both do stupid stuff. So whatever you're thinking that you can't follow, like, subscribe, you can't do anything with us. You can't come see us on July 15th on a Friday, Friday night. that we're going to try to be here. No, there's no trying. We're going to be there at some point with our booth and our banner and our Bibles and our <laughs> bracelets. If you want a bracelet to go show off to your friends, come see us. And if we have any other goodies, I'm going to have a, bluetooth speaker and we're going to be playing christian music some skillet maybe maybe yeah skillet yeah because skillet john cooper listen to skillet go find out listen to cooper stuff i don't promote stuff that i think that's stupid cooper (laughs) stuff (laughs) yeah i probably do cooper (laughs) stuff use your own discernment go listen to cooper stuff listen to at 6.30 in the morning on 100.7, 
You can listen to Alistair Begg do a sermon for half an hour. Cool He's marriage. going through marriage right now. And how... No, he... <sighs> Alistair Begg has been a pastor in his church for like a long time. Yeah. He's been married for, he's like, he's old, dude. <laughs> like, he's been married for a long he's time. He's going through a marriage. No, he's going through marriage in his sermon. Oh. Kevin's going to listen tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. on <laughs> Alistair Begg's Scottish <laughs> version of marriage and how a man's supposed to act. Scottish how, uh, yeah, he's Scottish, bro. <laughs> I know. You're killing me, bro. Know, I'm promoting these ba- pastors. Yeah, he's a good man. He's a good one. So is uh, MacArthur. MacArthur has, if you go to Truth for Life, uh, you can get the app on your phone. No, sorry. Truth for Life is Alistair Begg. So you got me all jacked. Yeah. Drink some of your coffee. Uh, go to Grace to You for John MacArthur's. Uh, biblical studies. He's great. He might put you to sleep, but listen to these guys. They put you to sleep. They know what they're talking about. They <laughs> know exactly what they're talking about. You wake up, you're like, oh my gosh. I gotta listen to it again. I'm serious. John MacArthur, Alistair Begg, that's uh, Vody Bauckham. He's very controversial. A lot of people are like, if it makes you go, Probably who you should be listening to. I don't know. Vody Bauckham. Like These are guys that we, we get in tune with. If you don't like it, then that's fine. Whatever. Street squad. Whatever. Like, Go somewhere else. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But what you're going to get here is real. You're going to get truth. Get everything. We're going to keep bringing it to you guys as much as we can. Unfiltered. Unfiltered, uncensored. Come see us July 15th. The Calham Park in Calhoun, Colorado. For all you people in Colorado Springs, it's about a 45-minute drive. Come out here. Come see us. Come get a bottle of water. Come get a bracelet. Should be a good time. Come get a Bible. Come bring some people. Look at all the vendors that are all around us. (laughs) <laughs> and then realize that, wow, we're really out of our element here. But come see us. And then July 17th, Living Word Community Church will have church at the El Paso County Fair. If you guys can't come see us at Callahan Fest, but you drive to the Callahan El Paso County Fair. You probably get rides after church. That's great. Let's come watch me and Kevin evangelize two carnies. We're going to we're going to we're going to live it out. Come see us. Because I know once we get together at the El Paso County Fair, we're probably going to get kicked out. <laughs> but we're going to do the best we can. We want to win people to Christ. We want to win the young people our age to Christ. Come hang out with us the 15th and the 17th. The 15th, we're going to have our own booth. The 17th, we're going to have church at the fair. Isn't there something on the 16th? No, I don't know. But you don't want to know what else we forgot to mention? If y'all want to just come hang out for a day pass or whatever, or just, like, well, I don't know what you have to do. Yeah, I don't either. But Thursday, this week, Friday, and Saturday, what are we doing this week? It's the church, uh, what's it called? I'm, I'm let me get this one. What's it called? Well, I don't know. What are we doing? It's like Horn Creek, but not Horn Creek. So what was Horn Creek? It was Horn Creek. A camp. Church camp. That's all right. Like there's that. cabins. There's a water park. There's video or arcade games. Y'all ladies. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. My son's going to be there. If you want to meet Jax, he'll be there. <laughs> come to Horn Creek. Y'all want to come play some video games? Maybe some air hockey. Some ski. I don't know what they got there. Maybe it's some ski Jelly ball. Stone? Some, yeah, Jelly Jellystone Stone Ridge. <laughs> That's such a weird name. We're butchering it. Melanie, we are so sorry. Hey, Jeremiah Johnson, what do you think about Kevin's rendition of everything he just said? <laughs> rendition? <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Hey, man. Jellystone National Park. Hey. Not Jellystone 
What do you National say? National Park? Yeah, well, whatever yeah, it is. Park. You said Jellystone, whatever you said. Jelly Ridge. Jelly Ridge. <laughs> Jellystone Jelly Park. It's in Castle Rock. Larkspur. Larkspur. It's off one of them. You can find it off the interstate. We're going to be down there uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, Adam will be there Thursday. I'll be there Friday, Saturday. Yeah, well, yeah, I have to go. Well, i got to go there, and then I'm going to go to work and then come back. Oh, you are? But we're going to be there barbecuing. Oh, maybe I'll do that, too. Like, yeah. I, well, because the cabin I have is already paid for. So, and your mom and dad are going to be, you're staying with your mom and dad? I don't know. So, Kevin's probably going to be sleeping in his car in a parking uh, lot. Yeah, in the, under the stuff. Was your mom and dad coming? Pretty, pretty sure. 60%. Is that how you think that you're going? Is because your mom and dad said they're going, so you assume that you're going? Yeah. Because they're there? Yeah. Well, then I hope to God they're going to be there, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure your dad said they were. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm going to, so me and my wife talked about it. She's going to go, I'm going to go, at, you know, and then she's going to have my clothes there. They got showers there. So, yeah, if okay. I have to, and I don't know, it depends on how my work week fit. But if I have to go to work, I'll probably just leave and then come back. Maybe I'll do that. What time are you going up there on Thursday? I don't know. Like, whatever time they're checking in, I don't know. Give me a hard time for I got to ask my wife. But you thought it was Jellystone Ridge. You, you know weren't even for sure that you had a cabin because you're like, well, I don't know if my mom and dad, you were just going to show up. <laughs> like, yeah. we're going to put you on a couch somewhere. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure. Mestif, Mestis Automotive and Cycle is going to be there. Sponsored it. <laughs> so we're going to be there either way. Because, yeah, Friday and then Saturday's the last. Well, everybody leaves. You're be there Thursday. So I'm be there Friday and Thursday and Saturday either oh, way. Why did you say it like that? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Because we got to be there Thursday. Right, what time? <laughs> either way, we're going to be there Thursday in the evening time for I will be afternoon if he gets off work Four. I mean you already live like I'm down close. the road yeah I'm close so. so if he's not there hit him up on his Facebook Instagram don't hit him up on TikTok cause he just opened it up and he doesn't even look at it no just, we're going to be a Jellystone, and we're going to be there, and we're going to barbecue, and we're going to go to the arcades. We're going to do a lot of, uh, we'll probably put on some live, yeah. live feeds. I'm thinking we haven't had any live feeds, but we'll do some live, uh, what do they call Vlogs. Vlogs. Yeah. And then we'll do some live vlogs. And then if we're there we'll at the- probably do a live vlog at, uh, on the 15th as well, right? Yeah, we're going to do a lot of live vlog, live things. We're going to get some good content. Yeah, content, and we're also going to do a couple of Bibles. Like, if we're at Jellystone, and it's nighttime, and we're sitting around somewhere, we may do a couple Bible studies, like, real quick, not an hour. Just real quick stuff, what's on our heart, what we've been seeing, what we've been observing. But we want to show you guys how we can still have fun, too, whether it's playing video games or whatever whatever they got there putt putt or whatever we're gonna do live on the street stuff is that this week yeah that's like Jelly tomorrow's Stone. wednesday yeah. so then the next day that's it's thursday days of the week work <laughs> well it's close in prayer adam father god i just thank you for this opportunity that we get to get together because we know that it's because of you and the shedding of blood on the cross that you did for us that we get to do this every day. We get to do this every week, Kevin and I, with this podcast that you have put on our hearts. And we love you so much for that. And we want nothing more than to honor you and try to walk more like you every day. Father, we just ask that you be with everybody this week as they go on through their lives. We ask that you put on this street squad on their hearts. The street squad is really just following you, Christ. And that... If anybody has any discernment about this, we ask that you just open up the scriptures, read it, study it, get back with us, and just do that, Father. We love everybody who's listening right now. Father, we just ask that you be with us for the rest of the week. 
As we go on to our church camp, we represent our church. We represent the street squad. We represent everything that we're doing. We know that you're moving in a huge way with us, Father, and we don't want to disappoint you. And it's your precious and powerful thing. We pray these things. Amen. Amen. Gang, baby. Street squad.